The Sarasota County Elder Care Channel is brought to you by Mike Levine and the great folks at Home Instead of South Sarasota County. Today's guest is Blair Post, owner of Contemporary Hearing, matching your lifestyle to today's technology. Hello, I'm Marianne Gordon from Home Instead in South Sarasota County. Welcome to the Elder Care Channel of Sarasota County. Today, I'm here with Blair Post from Contemporary Hearing. Hi Blair, how are you today? Welcome Marianne, thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Blair, can you give me a little background on yourself and contemporary hearing? Myself was, I grew up in a hearing impaired family. Uh, my grandfather wore what is a transistor body aid. You remember the one that used to little pocket radio? Yes, I do. And we used to have to talk to his pocket because if we talked up to his face, then the sounds would get lost. Uh, my mother wore hearing aids because she had uh, several surgeries that were unsuccessful and she also had hearing loss. We opened the office eight years ago. Uh, we wanted to create a, a, a comfortable environment for people to come in. We're not so much on the sales portion of it, we're more on the fitting portion. And we say that with true sincerity. Uh, we give a free week of demo. So we let the, the patient wear the product free for a week without any obligation or cost or contract or credit card. We want to show them the benefit of the product first. Um, we feel that if we listen to the patients, we allow them to listen to their loved ones better. That sounds great. Great philosophy. So I have a lot of questions about hearing aids. <laughs> I will try to answer them. First of all, um, how, how do I know what type of hearing loss I have? Well, you would go to a hearing center. Contemporary Hearing was a great place to go. Uh -huh. And we would do a full audiometric exam. Uh, we do an ear conduction, which is measuring your sound waves with the hearing uh, through the headphones. Also, there is a bone test that checks for nerve. And then we also do a speech test. Okay. So we take this information and we explain it to you in a generic form. Not saying you do or you don't, but we explain to you based on the results. These might be the areas that you're having problems the patient will validate the areas of concern they have and might be surprised at some of the areas that they realize they have. And then we start talking about the products. Okay. So does the type of hearing loss that I have dictate the type of hearing aid that I need? Sometimes, but in a general sensory neural hearing loss, uh, a pair of hearing aids or a bineural fitting will take care of your situation well. You can choose whether to have a over the ear or a in the ear product and in the ear have different sizes. All right. So once I get my hearing aid, how much better am I going to be hearing? Well, immediately you're going to feel a lot more information coming in and we want to control how much new information is so you're not overwhelmed. Too many people in the past have said, I heard too much. And that's because imagine being in a dark room and then you walk out into the sunlight. Too much bright, your eyes have to adjust. Well, if we're putting sound in your head, that can be very uncomfortable, such as loud amplifiers or earphones. Mm -hmm. So we put a acclimation program into the hearing aid, which allows the hearing aid to adjust to you gradually, bring you up to speed. You're starting off with some amplification, but not all that you really need until you're ready for it. Okay, so I'm not going to be shocked by, by the, the, no, the loudness. No, we work very hard because one of the main complaints we get, especially from the men, is whenever my wife does the dishes, it sounds like she's breaking them over my head. <laughs> so uh, dishes are a very noisy component. I do dishes all the time and take them out of the dishwasher and stack them, can. But we, we want to make it a more natural sound. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the husband should be aware if the wife is going to break them over the head because they're not listening. <laughs> Fair warning. So, yes. So, um, let me just... Let me just ask you, if I have hearing loss in one year, year do I require two hearing aids? Typically not. Um, some people do because they feel an imbalance, but if you have normal hearing range in one side and hearing on the other side, then no, a monorail or a single side fitting is fine. All right. Um, the next question, what different types of hearing aids are there? I know you talked about one behind your ear, one inside the ear. I've seen wires that come down the front of the ear. How many different styles do you offer? Well, I offer all styles available on the market except uh, the cochlear implants or the Bajas, and that's a medical procedure, and right. we are non-medical. But you have your standard, what is called RICS or receiver in the canals, 
And those are the ones with the thin little wires. Okay. And then also the custom hair maids are where you see the full shells in the ear. All right. Um, the standard BTEs are the traditional bigger ones in the back with the larger tubing. Mm -hmm. They offer different sound qualities. So one of the key factors to a successful fitting is listening to the patient and what they perceive sounds to be to choose the right product for somebody. Uh, we offer a wide variety of product lines. So through the interview process, we try to determine which product right now we have would best suit the sound quality that the person's looking for. All right. I, um, I have a very active lifestyle. So I'm playing tennis, I'm outdoors a lot. Um, what kind of a hearing aid would be best for me? Well, the proper fitting of it is a great point you raised about your social activity. And that's where a lot of people make their mistake when they purchase the hearing aids is they buy it because of the price, which is an important factor, absolutely. But you really need to purchase it for your social activity and what you want that hearing aid to process. So the more social you are, the more inviting situations you're involved in, you want to have a better or more complex circuit. So the best you can afford is what you want to get because it's not only going to give you better service now, but better service down the line and longer because it's more adjustable for as your hearing changes and not in volume. We've been making hearing aids loud ever since day one. That's amplification. Mm -hmm. It's able to control the noises and increase the speech. And that's what the higher end products do better. Mm -hmm. What is a, because I hear all these different buzzwords and I don't know what they mean. What is a directional microphone? Directional microphones have been on the market for several years, but what they really are is it's two microphones on the hearing device, one pointed to the foreground and one to the background. And it allows us to control the sound environment much better. Biggest complaint a lot of people have with hearing aids is that when they're in a crowd, they hear too much of the noise behind them. Right. So with the directional mics, we could actually control how much information gets fed into that back mic and into the fore mic. This helps out because we reduce the back mic volume and increase the foot mic volume and you can hear better in crowds. Do all hearing aids have directional microphones? They are available in a lot of models, but the smaller you go, especially if you're gonna go with customs, then you lose that option because you have to have enough faceplate space to accommodate the battery door, the program button, and any other accessories you look at. But typically, all models can get a directional mics on them if they're allowed in, in room. Okay. And you professionally program all the hearing aids at Contemporary Hearing? Yes, the hearing aids come in with an empty chip on, a very smart chip, but an empty chip. We download their hearing loss and then what is called in situ fitting, we actually put the hearing aids on the patient and while they're in the office, fit them to their comforts. And we use a wide variety of background sounds. My office is uh, has surround sound, so I will play restaurant noises and bar sounds and music to really give the patient a semi-experience of being out in the real world. After we complete this advanced programming session, then we send them out for a week to do their real life and have them come back a week later for follow-up and adjustments. And is that a continual process? I mean, if my hearing loss um, degenerates as time goes by, it'll be reprogrammed again. Is that how that works? Yes, and we will retest your hearing usually 12 to 18 months okay. uh, just to keep the files up and current. We also monitor your medications. A lot of people don't realize that medications can have an adverse effect on your hearing as well. And they can be reprogrammed. And that's what makes today's hearing aids much more a better investment because they can have a longer lifespan on them. Uh, people ask me all the time, how, much, how long should these last? And in the industry, it's five years. And that's typically tracked because of sales and people are looking at new technology about every five years. So on average is when they change their, 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 into the new hearing aids. Okay, what do you do with the old hearing aids? Can they well, be donated? If they are a behind the ear product, I am part of a foundation that will recycle them. Right. And they do global as well as domestic missions to fit people that can't afford it and give them a quality of life better than they can have. Wonderful program, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. So now I've heard about remote controls on hearing aids. What's the story with that? Remote controls have been around for quite some time. Uh, they're nice for people, especially if they have some dexterity or arthritis issues that they can't manage the buttons of the devices mm -hmm. themselves. So there are, um, remotes available from the manufacturer, but also in today's world with smartphones, there's apps. 
Oh wow. So you could actually download an app on your on your smartphone and control your hearing aids from your smartphone. So one of the things I say with some of our clients at home instead, our elderly clients, is that they will take their hearing aid out when they talk on the phone. Is that is that something that they should be doing or is there a way to make your hearing aid um, usable when you're on the phone? I've had that question thrown at me more times than I can think of. And to me, it's kind of backwards that you're taking out something to assist your hearing to hear on the phone. The, um, the proper setting up and teaching of how to use the telephone with the hearing aids is one of our features. Also, if necessary, we can create a special phone program in the hearing aid whether you are either automatically adjust to it or manually can be pulled into it. All right, and, and along that same line, if I'm in different sort of hearing situations and environments, does my hearing aid automatically adjust to changes in, in sound levels, et cetera? Yes, that's the great thing about the hearing aids today, especially the more advanced ones. They have multiple scenarios and situations in them that they will automatically change. Now, not dramatically, so you're not going to have a loud sound, so they become very soft, but the purpose is trying to reduce the distraction noise so the brain can stay focused on the speech that you're trying to understand. Uh, the key factor to good programming is talking to your specialist and audiologist when programming and letting them know really how well you're hearing and what your wants are will make your needs happen by listening to you. And that's the key. It really is in, in understanding the equipment. Um, the one big thing that has distressed me over years is my mother got hearing aids before I was in the industry. And when I tested her and found out what her needs were, I found out that she really didn't purchase the hearing aids herself, she was sold the hearing aids. She said, oh, these will work best for you. And, and that's a very common thing. There's a lot of trust put into us and it's fine, but you really need to explain to the patient what to expect and how to make things work and that's the key focus is so we do a lot of education in our office we'll teach them how to use the hearing aids what to expect how to alter them when needs are and the biggest thing is when you have a problem call me we're available all the time by phone or by email and we, we stay in touch with our patients because they're family that's so nice so what's basic care for a hearing aid what do i need to do myself to keep it up and running Daily, we talk about uh, when you take it out at nighttime or before you put it in the morning, use an alcohol swab and just clean out the portion that's in your ear. It kind of takes away the previous day's worth of perspiration and dead skin. And then if you do have dry skin in your ear, which a lot of medications can cause, or just as we get older, our skin doesn't retain the moisture, uh, there's a special oil for hearing aids that you apply on it to help hydrate and balance the pH in your ear. But you definitely want to keep that tip removed of dead skin and any wax debris for sound quality and hygiene. Okay. Um, I know that hearing aids run on batteries. What type of batteries and how long do they last? Well, that's the great thing about today is the batteries are what's called air zinc batteries. They used to have a lot of mercury in them, which were bad, but we've taken the mercury out now. But they do work. Uh, there's a lot of different batteries on the market. Uh, not to knock the retail market, but they're put on the shelf and rotated by a general person. If you want your best life batteries, you want to go to a hearing center. We keep in a adequate supply and we're constantly rotating for freshness. Um, which, think about batteries, they will lose their charge. Uh -huh. The other thing is manufacturers now are starting to come out with rechargeable hearing aids and a new company just came out with a power cell. Nice. So there's no battery at all. Um, it runs at a 24-hour cycle, um, and it's been pretty impressive. And it's nice for people that don't want to have that carefree or bad eyesight or arthritis. They just plug it in at nighttime, and they're good to go. That technology really does roll forward, huh? Yes, it does. <laughs> and I really love what I could do because over the years, I have been able to give people something back that they thought really wasn't available. Um, they've been told by people, there's nothing that really can be done. And the funny question I asked, I said, did, but did you ever try? And they always say, no, I just went by, they said I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I say, can't hurt to try. That's right. And we've been very successful helping people that thought they were unhelpable. Very nice. So now, if I have a problem with my hearing aid, it's not working, can I bring it to you for repair? Absolutely. I can deal with all manufacturers. I have 
parts in my office for most of the hearing aids on the market. Uh, give us a call, we'll squeeze you in. Uh, your hearing is our priority and I do work with all manufacturers. Wonderful, and next question, does my hearing aid have a warranty? New hearing aids come out with a one, two, or three year warranty from the manufacturer. The one thing that a lot of people are unaware of is that you can purchase additional years warranty. So if your product is working well for you, if you really don't think you need a new one, but you want to protect what you have, buy the extended warranty and we promote them highly. My personally, I don't buy a lot of extended warranties on dishwashers or those other products, but for the hearing aids, they really can make a difference. Um, such as anything else, aftermarket, the manufacturers are going to hit you with larger fees. They're mm -hmm. going to charge you to repair it, and they're also going to put a warranty on top. So you're going to get one whether you want one or not, but that is a protection for you as the wearer as well as them as the manufacturer. All right. Does, um, does insurance cover hearing aids? Loaded question. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the insurance company. It depends on who issued the insurance. I have a lot of people from up north, if they were in part of a union or they work for a state, a lot of times they have benefits, um, engineers, steel workers and such of that nature. But the best thing to do is come in, bring me your insurance card, we'll do a pre-qualify and let you know exactly what your coverages are and what procedures we have to do to get you taken care of. Nice. Okay, last question. Okay. Blair, what sets contemporary hearing apart from other hearing centers in the Venice area? To be fair, I think they all, and we all, try to do the best job, but what I feel personally, and, I, and I've been told by many people, so I say this humbly but proudly, is that we really are available for our patients. Um, come in on Saturdays, come in early, stay late, I do house calls. That's nice. And we really take care of the importance is you depend on us for quality of life. We've promised that with you with the hearing industry. I do my best to stand up and give you what you asked for. That is my obligation to you and my promise to my mother and grandfather who didn't have the service that I was available to give them because I wasn't there at the time. Blair, it was such a pleasure having you. Um, very informational for our viewers. Obviously, you're very passionate um, about what you do and, um, and your customers and clients um, know that. Come back and talk to us again. I will do that. And please, if you have any questions, my website is contemporaryhearing.com. Please check it out. And if you have any other questions, come on by, have a cup of coffee, and we'll talk about your hearing. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Blair.